Hey guys, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art, and in today's video, you guys are going to see me go through the whole spectrum of emotions as I paint, and possibly the grief cycle, because this picture is probably the most frustrating and challenging one that I have done in quite some time. Um, I typically work with pastels on some kind of pastel paper, whether it is Cans and Mitons paper, or a sanded paper like UART or pastel matte paper, it's usually some kind of paper. And if it's not in a sketchbook form, I typically have it um, adhered to a foam core board, whether it's just a quarter inch one or a half inch one, there's usually some kind of give to that board, which allows me to really press in that pastel and get it into the tooth of the paper. It doesn't, my pastel doesn't skip across the surface of the paper as much. And so that's typically how I like to work. Now, because I like to punish myself, I decided to throw all of that out the window and try something new. And I learned a lot. I had some theories and a hypothesis about what would work and what didn't wor wouldn't work. And some of those got proved true and some of those I was very wrong on. So if you guys wanna see how pastels work on a wood surface, then keep watching. So to get started, I purchased a board from Michaels. This is just a wood panel. And I then coated the whole surface using the golden pastel ground. And instead of using a paintbrush like I did in my previous pastel ground video, I used my rubber catalyst, which is kind of like a big spatula. And I tried to get a fairly smooth layer. Now there's gonna be imperfections in the layer that I added but I wanted to get a fairly smooth layer. And then when that dried, I did a th thin coat of the Dr. PH Martin's India ink in violet, and I had just diluted it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol so it wouldn't be quite so dark or opaque. Then I let that dry completely, and then I sketched out my picture using a pastel pencil. And then once I had sketched in the picture, I went over the areas that I knew were gonna be really dark in the end and used a dark ink to block in those shapes. And this was a really good decision on my part. I knew that this board wasn't going to accept a lot of layers of pastel, and I wanted to be able to make sure those darks were dark enough, and if any pastel kind of flaked off, that it would still be dark underneath. And so I used a really dark um, ink for the really dark shadows and then any cast shadows, anything that's gonna be reflected off of the snow but still need to be a little bit dark, I used it like a dark blue. And I used a little bit of rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle to just kind of help spread it around. Cause I did notice the nature of working with the pastel ground and the wood panel, the ink didn't spread or move as easily as it would on a traditional pastel paper. Now one mistake I did do was I did not have a plan really when I started this piece. I just found kind of a semi blurry reference fit picture to work from and I didn't have a big plan on how I wanted to change it. So in retrospect, I would have made that bridge a larger, I would have kind of pulled it down more into the foreground and made most of the focus be on the background and the bridge. There was too much snow too much um, foreground that is just kind of empty and that led to some frustrations later on and led to a look I didn't like. But another good thing I did that I was glad I had decided to do was to use pan pastels for those early layers. And this is pretty common for me, but I knew it was gonna be really important in this picture because the board is so hard and it has no give to it that it's gonna be hard to get pastels into that tooth of the paper. And so I decided I was just gonna kind of do a thin layer of the pan pastels over the top to tone everything the way I wanted it to look. And honestly, if I was to do a picture on a similar surface again, I would spend more time on those pan pastel layers because that was a really, really great way to get base layers of color, get smooth blends, and not have a thick layer of pastel that flakes off easily. So. I would say yes for the pan pastels and do as many layers as you can. I would also do a more refined underpainting. So you know how I just did a base coat of purple? Um, I would probably do a spot underpainting where I would tone specific areas 
specific to what I want that piece to be. So if I was going to do like a portrait of a bird, I would tone the beak a different color than what the feathers are going to be versus the background or any other areas of the picture. I would kind of do like a, like a really refined underpainting where I block in those basic colors. And that would have, would have helped a lot in this process and reduce some frustration since this picture can't take a lot of layers. Um, but once I got the pan pastel layer done, then I started in with some hard pastels. Now the hard pastels were one of those things that I chose to do because I thought that they would be helpful because they wouldn't fill in the tooth of the paper very quickly, which is true. You can see how little pastel with each swipe I'm getting onto this board. All of that speckliness is because that pastel is kind of skidding across the surface. And it was really nice to get these interesting textures. And it was also nice um, because I didn't fill in the tooth of the paper, but it led to some frustration because it was hard to block in base colors. It was hard to blend. It led to some frustration as I was working. And so this is probably something I would change in the future. I would probably choose a more medium textured pastel, one that's not uber soft that's gonna fill in the tooth of paper, but I don't know if a really hard pastel like a Rembrandt or a new pastel was a great option because it, it just couldn't deposit that color very well. So then I tested out blending those pastels using a sponge because I'd used a sponge to help apply it with the pan pastels. And what I discovered was that the sponge kind of picked up too much of the pastel that I'd applied. So it was picking up too much of those hard pastel layers that I'd done and over blending what was left. And since I was working on a darker surface, it made it almost look kind of ashy and gray and anemic. And so I didn't really love that look. And there wasn't enough pigment on the board to really start utilizing like the rubber shapers or the catalysts yet. So I decided to just keep layering those pastels to see what would happen next. So my next mistake I made was trying too many new things at once. Now in the past, when I am testing out a new medium or a new like pastel or a new paint or something like that, I typically will draw something like an apple and something simple, something I'm familiar with. That way I can focus all my attention on how that supply is responding and working instead of trying to figure out how to draw the subject. And I did not do that. I kind of had this mindset of like, oh, it's an expensive board, which it's not that expensive. But there was something about it in my brain that was like, I don't want to waste this. So instead of painting a boring apple, I decided I was going to paint this more complicated night scene that I'm very unfamiliar with painting. I'm not familiar with painting night scenes. I'm not familiar with painting a lot of artificial lighting, especially like street lights and things like that. So not only was I testing out a new medium and seeing like how it was all going to work, I was also trying to figure out how I was going to paint it and what's the best approach. And by having those, different things going on, it led to a lot of failure and it made it so I couldn't enjoy the experimenting process because then I was trying to like make it look like the reference photo. So just keep it simple when you're trying out new things. Don't try a whole bunch of new things at once because that can lead to some frustration. Now one thing that really worked on this was using workable fixative. This worked great to help isolate some layers of pastels to help really adhere them to the board. And if I was getting too light in some areas and I needed to just darken up a whole section, I could spray a little bit of that workable fixative to darken it up without having to do a lot of pastel layers over the top. So workable fixative was a win when working on this surface. I found that I enjoyed this process more when I started pulling out more of my softer pastels. Um, after I used the Rembrandt and New Pastels, I then jumped into the Jack Richardson Pastels, which I feel like have a similar texture to the Mangayo Gallery, um, and maybe just a smidge firmer than like Unison Pastels. But what I liked about it is that these were soft enough to get enough pigment down without having to press really hard. 
I had some could layer these pastels up and I could blend them out using like the rubber shapers and the catalyst without having some weird blending issues. But it wasn't so hard that it skipped along the surface too much or created like a really splotchy texture. And so if I was to do this again, I would just skip those really hard pastels unless I was sketching out the basic shapes and just jump right into a, a more medium textured pastel. So what I did find that worked with this process is using like the rubber or silicone based blending tools. So like the clay rubber shapers or the big catalyst, which is like a giant spatula without the handle. Um, I found that those really pressed in the pigment into the paper or into the board and didn't lift a ton up and it didn't over blend. And so I found that worked the best. All the other ones I tested out really lifted that pastel off of the board and really just didn't give great results. And don't let this uh, video deceive you. I had so much footage of this project because I just kept going back and forth and reworking areas. Typically, I don't cut out much of my actual working on a project. I just cut out the dead time where I'm like picking out a color and I just speed it up a bit. So usually I have about two hours of footage for most of my like nine by 12 or smaller pictures that I do here on YouTube. Um, I had about four hours of footage <laughs> for this piece and I cut out so much of that for this video and I sped it up so fast just because there was just so much because I kept going back and forth and reworking areas because I was struggling so much. So don't let this fool you. This was, was a struggle for me. But one positive that I discovered and one thing that I found worked really well with these pastels was that the really, really soft pastels were great for those end layers. So funny story, Schminky pastels are considered the softest of all soft pastels. They are notoriously super, super soft and super delicate. Um, and a lot of artists absolutely love them and they feel like they're top tier pastels. I do not like them. And I bought a set of 30, I splurged, they were pretty expensive and I got them and I used them and I hated them. I didn't like the color selection in the assorted set. So I think that's part of the problem but I didn't love the texture of them. They were so powdery and crumbly and they just broke so easily and it was super frustrating to work with and I did not like that about them. But I pulled them out because at this point in the picture, I was like, I have nothing else to lose. You can see all the pastels on my desk just kind of thrown everywhere. I decided I would see what a really soft pastel would do. And so instead of doing like your traditional like hardness of pastels, I decided to go ultra, ultra soft. And they worked so good on the wood panels. Like they were the best pastels for wood panels. So if I was to do a lot, decide to do a lot more wood panel work, I would be purchasing more spinky pastels, even though I don't like them on my traditional pastel surfaces that I work on. I don't know if I just have too hard of a hand naturally, or if it's because I work on sanded paper, but I, I don't like those pastels, but I do like them on the surface. And I was really excited to find uh, a use for those pastels. So if you have really, really soft pastels, working on a board like this might be a great option. So at this point in the picture, you might've noticed that my desk got cleaner. That's because I had to take a break. I was frustrated and I kept working on it and finally I reached that point where I realized that I was going to overwork it and fill in the tooth of the, the board um, if I kept staring at it. So I took a break, I put the picture to the side, cleaned off my desk and came back to it the next day and then mostly just used only the schminky pastels. Um, and they this day went a lot better um, I was able to kind of figure out kind of the color story I wanted to do with it and layer it up. I decided that I was going to go very, very impressionistic with this and really lean into creating different textures. And I love how 
the the trees that are lit in the background look and I really love the play on colors that I did for that again I just wish that would have been more of the focus so I wish I would have made that section a little bit bigger I would say that this surface isn't the best for beginners. I would say it probably works best for someone that is really confident with their skill and able to just like be pretty precise with where they put the colors and how they want them to go down because you, you don't want to do a lot of layers with this because one thing I did notice is the more layers I put on, if I picked up the board and like stood it next to my easel, I had a lot of pastel dust come off, which isn't normal for my experience. I usually work on a sanded paper, usually like UART, and it holds on to that pastel a lot so I don't create tons and tons of dust, which is part of the reason why I like working on that surface. This, on the other hand, I noticed a lot of that dust would fall off if I didn't like press it in really well. So you wanna be fairly exact with where you put the color so you don't have to keep going back and forth and building up tons and tons of layers of pastel. Um, and then I also noticed that this board is so rigid that it was also really prone to getting the pastel knocked off of it. So just normal bumping around made that pastel dust fall off more quickly than it did from other surfaces I worked on. So just something to keep in mind. If you don't like like tons of pastel dust generated, um, this might not be the best surface for you. One thing I did like about this surface was I love the texture from the, the pastel ground, like the swirls and swoops that I didn't get perfectly smooth. And I loved it when I did it on my previous project that I'd used the pastel ground on. I like that interesting texture the pastel ground creates. And I loved on here that it didn't, like I didn't have to work around tape or any clips. Since it was on a board, it was easy to move around and I didn't have to tape the surface. So I didn't get any weird halo effects. So I really liked that aspect of working on this surface. So here is pretty much the finished piece. Um, this piece was an adventure for me but I did have to keep reminding myself that it was a learning opportunity and I did learn a lot from this and I can't wait to try this again, but utilizing what I've learned. So by doing a more exact underpainting, by working with the pan pastels and the soft pastels, skipping those hard pastel layers, using the rubber blending tools instead of the sponge blending tools, all of those concepts and having a better game plan before I jump into it. So I'm going to take this knowledge and apply it to the next project. I will see you guys next time and I hope you have a great day. Bye.